Hello, this is Dampro. Welcome to my vehicle rigging tutorial series. In this series, I'm going to go through my full workflow for um, creating a rig for basically any wheeled vehicle. So I'll be using um, this very cool, futuristic looking um, dune buggy, I guess. And this was actually created by a very talented member of the Blender community, and that would be Chris Kuhn. So if you go over to blendswap.com, you can find Chris's work over there, and he's got a lot of uh, great stuff, so uh, I highly recommend you check out the rest of his stuff. But if you search through his blends, you can find um, the Blend Rover Rigged and download that, and then you'll be able to follow along with this tutorial. Now, it's always important when you download somebody else's model and uh, uh, their work that you check the license that they've um, released that under. So I've checked the license, and Chris has released this under... Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Like. So that's a lot to say, but basically what it means is um, as long as you are giving the original author credit, which I am doing here, um, you're free to do whatever you want with it as long as it's um, not commercially. So I'll be using um, just the model, not the rig um, that comes with this um, to for education purposes and for this tutorial series. So uh, my YouTube channel is free and it's not monetized so I don't have to worry about the commercial aspects of it and since I'm not going to be releasing it uh, or not uh, really changing anything and then releasing it um, I'm safe uh, for these other concerns here so uh, like I mentioned make sure you're always checking the license so if you need to use something commercially make sure that you can do that legally all right now one of the other things I want to talk about is Chris is actually a tutor over at cgcookie.com now, he actually has a uh, tutorial on how he created the rig for this specific model. Now, I'm actually going to be just using the meshes, and I'm going to rig this in a very different way. So it's going to function differently, and the rigging method is going to be very different. So um, I don't want to put the impression out there that I'm just um, plagiarizing his stuff and then uh, repackaging it for free, uh, because CG Cookie is a paid site. I am actually a member over there. I've been a member for many years. I highly recommend everybody who is um, uh, into 3D um, to be a member over there if, if you're into Blender um, because they've got probably the best tutorials uh, located anywhere. So um, again, uh, I'm going to be using the same model. I'm going to be rigging it differently. Um, so I don't want to make the impression that I'm just plagiarizing his stuff. So uh, I actually went an extra step, even though I can use this legally as far as the licenses, I didn't feel right about doing that without going to CG Cookie and explaining to them that I wanted to use that model and I was going to be making this tutorial, um, of course using different methods. And uh, they were fine with that and gave me their blessing. So thank you very much to CG Cookie and the CG Cookie team. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, again, what I'm interested in for this model, even though this is already rigged, and like I mentioned, you can actually go to... Um, cgcookie.com and if you remember you can see how uh, Chris approaches his rigging. Now he actually does it uh, very differently than what I'll be showing. He uses what I call object based rigging and that is where you use the objects themselves and sometimes the object origin uh, of the object is uh, see here <laughs> is pretty important on how things rotate. Um, he also adds um, object constraints to these and often uh, he will set up uh, parenting hierarchies with empty objects. So, like I mentioned, it is called, this is what I refer to as object based rigging, where you uh, parent all this stuff together and use object based constraints. And what I'm going to be doing is basically undoing all this and just get everything back down to the meshes. And then I will be using an armature based rig. So, it's kind of a different animal, it's a very different animal. Um, there are different constraints that are available, and I'll be showing different techniques, of course. Now some things obviously are going to look similar in the end, or appear similar, but uh, I will be using different um, um, techniques to get the final results. So with all the licensing and the possible uh, plagiarism problems out of the way, hopefully I've covered any concerns that anybody would have on that. Let's get in and start this rigging project, and I always start every rigging project by preparing my meshes for rigging. So in this case, basically what I need to do is get everything oriented in my scene correctly um, and get its default state so I can start my rig. So for this, I'm going to start by deleting the ground plane here that his rig was sitting on. I'm going to do Alt-G to bring um, the whole thing. Now this uh, cube icon here, the empty, is actually the master control for Chris's rig. Let me get back into, uh, take a look at this. So I want to select everything 
And like I mentioned before, Chris uses object-based rigging, and that means that there's constra constraints scattered across uh, many of the different things here. So I want to get rid of all those. I'm going to delete them all by selecting everything, going to the Object tab, finding Constraints, and Clear All Object Constraints, and that will clear everything out. The next thing I want to do is I want to um, unparent everything. So I'm going to do Alt-P and clear parent but I don't want to just clear parent because if I was to do that everything would probably uh, slide off into um, some weird position here and I can demonstrate that and so let me go do alt Z to back that up and it looks like my object constraints came back let me get rid of them again okay so what I want to do is do alt P clear parent and keep transformation so when I cleared all the constraints everything uh, went back to um, normal there so I want to keep that their position so I'll do that and now all of the parenting and child hierarchies are gone. Next up I'm going to select this top layer here. Um, so this has most of the meshes but it also has two controlling objects. So it's got this cube which was the main control and the steering which are no longer doing anything. I want to move them to this second layer down here and that has all the rest of the um, uh, empties and other objects that were used for the rig. I'm going to select everything and delete them out and now we are left with just the objects that make up uh, the vehicle itself and it looks like there are 38 different mesh objects that create this vehicle so the biggest one here is obviously the center piece and then we've got all these smaller pieces alright one more thing I want to do is make sure that uh, everything is sitting on the floor of my of the in the in the middle of our scene here so I'm going to select all those meshes do GZ drag everything up and make sure that um, the wheels are right on the floor. I want to start taking a look at all of these um, different mesh objects here. If I get my end panel out, it looks like these are cocked a little bit and I see that's two degrees here. I'm going to type in zero. And then I'm going to just do control C while hovering over that and then I can quickly paste this into the other ones. So I just want to give a quick run through on all these mesh objects to make sure that everything is straightened out. It looks like our um, steering column has been rotated a little bit. So R Y. There we go. I'm gonna rotate that back. There. Oops, G X. Okay, and drag that out a little bit. Looks like I've straightened that back out. If I look underneath here, it looks like there's a few objects that got rotated out of place, so I want to straighten those back out. And after everything is straightened back out, I'm going to make all of these positions uh, permanent. So um, that's basically what I'm after here. I want to make sure that everything is lined up good. All the joints are lining up where they should be. And uh, I won't go through every mesh object uh, individually, but uh, I would spend some time doing that, putting everything back um, into place and get it ready for rigging. And then well, one of the main things here, one of the main things is when I'm in front orthographic view, I want the... Uh, whatever I'm rigging, whether it's a character or if it's any type of mechanical object that has left and right uh, parts to it, I want it to face me in front orthographic view, and that will give me access to the X mirror tools and also the symmetry tools. Um, and also for an animator, it's going to give the animator um, uh, some tools for um, copying and switching from left to right. So basically, I want to select everything, do Shift S, cursor to center, and then do R. Z negative 90 and make sure that everything is facing me here. Now let me undo that because I did not change my pivot point to 3D cursor so everything kind of turned around sideways. Again do R Z negative 90 and there now everything is straight. Again everything is sitting on the, the ground floor there. We've got our tires touching the floor and now I want to make all of these positions permanent. So if you'll notice all of these object origins are kind of all over the place and that means that these are kind of in a breakable state. So if I select everything to Alt-G-R-S, uh, everything's going to turn around, and I don't want that. I want everything to stay exactly where it is uh, right now and be permanent. So I'll do Control-A and apply my transforms. So I'll apply the location, and then I can click on Rotation and Scale over in the Tool Panel. And you'll notice that everything now has um, location values of 0, 0, 0, X, Y, and Z for location, rotation, and 1, 1, 1 for scale. Now, uh, also the object origins are all been reset to the center. But well, basically what it means is if you move anything, whether on purpose or 
on accident, you can take all those objects and quickly um, recenter them in the world by doing Alt G R S, whatever you transform you have done to them, and they will drop back. So this, they are now in their default state. So this is where I always prefer to start my rigging, and that's kind of the last process is to make sure that all the um, transforms are applied to each object, and it's going to really help if you've ever had anything kind of move out of place when you've uh, parented things together and unparented them. If you needed to change things, um, this will give you a good default to get back to. Um, it also puts all of the mesh objects um, right at the center of the world. So when we add our armature object, which is also going to have its object origin at the center of the world, you can actually um, solve some problems, especially if you're using an armature modifier. Now, we won't be doing that in this tutorial because we're just going to be parenting our different mesh objects to different bones within an armature. Um, but that can uh, come into play if you're using a deforming mesh or using an armature modifier. One thing that may seem odd is now that I have this wheel that has its, uh, if I select it, it's not going to rotate correctly. It's going to rotate around that object origin. So this is actually not a problem. As soon as we add our um, bones, we will add a bone um, to the place that we want that wheel to rotate. We will parent that uh, wheel to that bone, and then uh, its object origin, the object origin of the tire itself, will no longer uh, be relevant. So this is why I like to start it out this way. All right. Now that we have got our mesh preparation um, taken care of, up next we can add our armature and start creating a rig. Until then, good luck.